In today's video, we are going to look into the capture command or rather we should say it is a prefix that we can use before any command. So what this capture would do is it would suppress uh, the error. So when you have a program or you are making a do file, you would want it to uh, execute continuously and if there is an error, you would want it to suppress and not uh, break the code or break the program. Rather, you would want it to continue performing the other tasks. Right? This is where the capture command would uh, come in. So uh, let's uh, load some data. And as usual, we have this auto data. We have these variables and let's just run these three regressions, right? So remember when we would execute these three regression, it would quickly uh, run the command and execute the regression, right? But for now, let's just say if we, uh, if we distort our price variable, if we replace the price variable, all the values in the price variable with a dot, that is to say that uh, only missing values would be there in the price variable. Uh, let me also just show you from the uh, from the data view. So you see there is no price data. So if there isn't any price data, you cannot uh, regress. Uh, you, you cannot have a regression where there is a price variable. So, so this, this command over here, regress price on MPG would fail and it would give an error. So let's just say if still I wanted to execute all these commands, what would happen is that the first one would execute as soon as standard tries to run the second command, a regress price on MPG, it would fail and uh, the, the do file, file would stop and the last command would not be executed or any command coming after the error would not be executed. So let's just demonstrate this and you can see that regress weight on repair 78, this command had been executed, but we get an error over here. So what we can do is we can add this capture colon before any command. So I'm doing this with uh, the regress command, but you can uh, use it with any command. And now if I execute this command, you would see that it, it didn't execute it, the regression, but it didn't give me the error. So what the capture is doing is it is suppressing the output one thing. So any output, if, if the command was correct, right? If the command was right, uh, if it was executed, it would still not show the output in the output window. And at the same time, it would suppress the error message. You can see this R, uh, what we call return code. Uh, this R2000, it represents a specific kind of an error this return code will also be suppressed and any output error message would be suppressed. Additionally, any output that would be generated would also be suppressed. Okay, so uh, you can use capture without colon, it would also work perfectly fine. So uh, same these three commands I have pasted over here, but now uh, I have this capture um, before the command where I know it would throw an error. So let's execute these three commands again. And now you would see that this first command was executed. Then where it reached to the second uh, line of code, the second command, which we know would be an error. It didn't show any error sign, didn't show any output or the return code. It didn't stop the code, the program uh, continued execution, executing the commands. And, and then we had the last command, which is regress MPG rep 78. So now you understand that if there is a capture before a command, then um, any, uh, you know, uh, we aren't purely interested in suppressing the output, but we are interested in execution of the code. We want the com the code to execute the program to continue even if there is an error. Okay, so let's look at the return code. 
when we uh, again we let's run this regression and we know that we do not get the output table because there is no observation and then we get the uh, the return code but once we use the capture prefix we do not get the return code but somehow let's just say we wanted this return code so that we uh, can use it some in 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 some other commands then we can uh, this this return code would be dis, uh, stored in underscore rc so you can display it or use it in uh, you know other uh, uh, aspects of your uh, program okay uh, but if this uh, you know this command is the one that didn't had any error so if i was to execute this command one thing you would note that we didn't got any output the command is correct this is the same command over here right mpg uh, over uh, rep 78 we do get uh, the output if we do not use capture but when we use the capture command we do not get the output but remember the command had this uh, okay this one is the command uh, now you would uh, see return list so now you get the betas and the other stuffs the the number of observations if you understand what return list would do uh, but when a command is successfully executed remember its return code would always be zero so you can have some kind of a conditional programming where you can say if the return code was zero then the program was successful uh, this is what i have done over here so if uh, uh, let's just say we have a regress price on mpg but if our return code is not equal to zero then we would want the program to generate another variable called price two and its value would be one it is just an um, just an uh, you know idea um, obviously it wouldn't make sense to generate a price two variable with the value of one so uh, okay one more thing that i would like to show you over here is the noisily uh, prefix so you can use noisily with capture and i would in my next video also explain this noisily command separately but what this noisily would do is the capture would suppress the output if the command is correct but somehow we do not want capture to suppress the output but rather just that um, you know if there is an error the program should continue so we use this noisily and uh, this is the same command over here if we were to execute this command we would not see any output although the command is correct the command would execute but the output would not be showed but if you use noisily uh, prefix over here then uh, uh, the, the output would be shown right but still if you can see the uh, the rc code is zero which means the command had successfully been executed now remember uh, with stata either a a command is executed or it is not executed to demonstrate this idea let me generate two variable a and b and let's both of them have a value of one so if i were to command stata to drop variable a b and c but you know that c is not a variable in our variable list there is no variable by the name of c what would stata do would it drop a and b and then give us an error message or would it not drop any of them so let's see so what happened is it gave us an error variable c is not found but at the same time it didn't drop a and b although a and b are perfectly there what it could have done is it could have dropped a then it could have dropped b and then it it could have given us an error message but this is not how stata works stata either executes a command completely or do not execute it completely right so why why do i need to tell this because if we were to use capture before this drop a b c and we know that it do have an error it would suppress the error right but 
A and B would not be dropped. Although what we can do is we can use capture block. And what this block is, it is the same capture, does the same functions. But if we have multiple commands that we need to capture, let's just say we need to capture all these three regressions, then we, uh, we could have used uh, this capture block. And what it is, it is a block where we can have our commands. So we start with capture, then the curly brackets. And within the pair of curly brackets, we can have all our commands that we want to put in there. So if I was to execute this, what would happen? Uh, Stata would drop variable A, right? Let's just execute this. So you can see what happened. It is Stata dropped the variable A, then it moved to uh, drop C command and there was an error and then it uh, it didn't drop variable B. So what is happening is that if anywhere in this capture block, there is an error, it would stop execution of that specific capture block and move out of that block, right? If that makes sense. A better way could have been, let me generate A again. Uh, a better way could have been to use this capture with each of the command but that depends on different scenarios. In this scenario, I would want to have a capture with each of the drop. Uh, drop. So, so we have B and A and we do not have C. What it would do is it would drop A and B, but obviously if there's no C, it wouldn't be dropped. So now you get an idea of the capture block and the capture command. In our next video, we would uh, we would uh, delve uh, deeply into the noisily and quietly uh, prefixes. And if you want to download this do file, uh, you can find the link in the description. Do subscribe to our channel, do hit the bell icon. And thanks for, thanks for watching the video.